registered enterprise that has always brought companies and investors together to foster business growth and fuel individual wealth creation that brings prosperity to all. Yeah, Ghana Stock Exchange has been adjudged the most innovative African stock exchange at the recently held African Investor Capital Market Index Series Awards in New York. So come along, it's time to do business with the Ghana Stock Exchange and see things happen for you too. Visit the Ghana Stock Exchange, it's on the 5th and 6th floors of CD House Liberia Road or you can call 0302. 669908 or 669935. Visit www.gse.com.gh. I can talk to a licensed stockbroker for more information. Ghana Stock Exchange, bringing companies and investors together since 1989. Joy 99.7 FM. And here's the team at the Health Facilities Regulatory Agency. To you, Prince Kaka of Internal Audit, Najat Jawula of Hefer as well. To you, Christabel Aram Nuho. And our registrar and our director himself, Dr. Matthew Cherme. Have a great, great, great day, yeah? And the team at Hefra. Also goes out to the team at GCB Bank Osu Oxford Street, to Wendy, Richmond, Shirley, Sicho, Felicia, and Team GCB Bank Osu. Happy, happy birthday. Going out to you, Michael Alija. And that's from your sweet wife and your children, Michael. Program. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the first. <laughs> oh yes, yes. I I want to be the human human bubblegum. <laughs> so uh, when am I starting my um, 
CSR project. Oh, at, friend, uh, I have to the, take you to the Ghana Standards Authority first. Oh, for how? them to certify that I am certified by this. <laughs> <laughs> good to see you like this. Uh, good to see you. How's dog. your week been? Well, it's been great. It's been awesome. Um, right. Looking was looking forward to seeing you, and you're here. Ah, so yeah. let's get it on now. Right. Uh, we started the conversation about breast cancer last week, mm. and. Uh, of course, we continue today uh, looking... Uh, it's the Breast Cancer Awareness Month we need month, to actually, emphasize no, that it's the Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So, mm. there are women out there, if you if you haven't checked yet, if you haven't gone for the screening, Doc, we can do that at Medical Hospital, right? Yes, at, at our Medina branch, okay. um, Firestone. Okay. Uh, so, they can come in any day, walk through. Mm. We'll take you through a series of things, teach you how to do the breast self-examination, which is very, very important. I'll okay. talk a bit more about it uh, during the show awesome so uh, it's a continuation of the conversation we started last week we'll quickly look at uh, we'll recap what happened last week and then throw in uh, this week's education so basically we'll be looking at the causes of breast cancer today right so last week i think we got a message from one of our listeners yeah uh, sorry before we go ahead <laughs> let me greet our listeners uh wonderful afternoon to all of you and like actually today i want to dedicate today's discussion to the memory of um somebody uh, who passed a little over a year ago uh, sadly uh, Martha can come uh, she works as an administrator at the University of Ghana and um, she succumbed after many years of battle to breast cancer oh. so uh, this month I am dedicating uh, these uh, uh, discussions uh, to her memory uh, she's fondly remembered by uh, the husband, Obese Chemesi, and okay. then her children, Akusia Ufuruwa Obese, and then Abna Obese Bia uh, Obese. May she rest in peace. Right. So last, last week, I think one of our listeners sent in a message, um, and she was very concerned about uh, uh, some changes that had happened in her breast. And, of course, she was thinking it was all about breast cancer. Mm. Um, I think we'll walk through a few of their possibilities. Um, finding changes like pain, uh, which may be cyclical, meaning associated with your menstrual cycle or coming on at particular times in the month, and the lumpiness or the presence of a lump in the breast. There's so many other factors that we need to look out for before we can draw the conclusion that this is a... Uh, a harmful lump meaning cancer mm -hmm. or a harmless one yeah and i think i mentioned about seven different harmless lumps that we can find in the breast so to this week and probably next week we just want the focus to be on breast cancer the big one right. i mean the bad one mm -hmm. so that we are aware worldwide breast cancer is the most frequently uh, diagnosed life-threatening cancer in women so, uh, a lot of women should show a lot of concern. I must, however, say that about 1% of all cases of breast cancer are found in men. And I did mention last week that men have breast tissue. Uh, so, it's not an entirely uh, female discussion. It's not only females who should be concerned. But I keep saying, like this, that the way men are fond of this particular part of the anatomy of the female uh even if it doesn't affect us directly indirectly it affects us <laughs> so we should also be concerned 2.1 million people are impacted globally every year that's the number of people who are affected uh, uh or whom will make a diagnosis of breast cancer mm -hmm. in 2018 the who estimates that 627,000 women will die from breast cancer that's a staggering uh, a, a number and this represents about 15 percent of all cancer deaths so it's important we talk about breast cancer in ghana um in 2012 uh 2200 individuals were diagnosed uh, with breast cancer so and it's quite common yeah in, in our country as well we look at the global picture 2.1 million people and then in ghana uh 2200 individuals were diagnosed it doesn't mean that this is the actual uh, uh number because our health seeking habits too uh, are, are not the best and unfortunately we recorded about a thousand deaths uh, 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 uh that year or that's the number of deaths we record every year mm -hmm. so the, this is the these are the statistics lexus and they don't make for easy reading so what is breast cancer 
well, it's a disease of the breast involving uncontrolled cell growth uh, with the ability of these uncontrolled cells to spread and invade the surrounding tissues and even much more distant uh, organs. So cancer really, wherever it affects, is about uncontrolled cell growth. So uh, our cells grow, our bodies you know, grow you know, at a cellular level, mm-hmm. but that growth is always controlled by different genetic uh, or by different genes. But anytime we have cancer, then it means that control, uh, that growth rather, is uncontrolled. Okay. So that is what it is. Um, I will put in some of the discussion on Facebook, and let's do. I'm, I'm sure you're looking at that picture. Yes. You know of um, very uh, a very graphic picture graphic one, of yeah, yeah. of how we see breast cancer in our part of the world. This is very late presentation, mm-hmm. and you can see that the breast is ulcerated. You know, the whole thing, the skin is gone in most parts yeah. of, of, of it. It doesn't look like what most people would know as a breast. So um, those who want to have a look at it, you know, later all of this will go onto our Facebook page, Medicas Hospital, and then they can look at it. So we begin to understand the severity or the gravity, you know, of the condition. So what causes breast cancer? Well, we're not quite sure what causes breast cancer like most cancers but there are risk factors that have been identified Mm -hmm. that are closely associated with an increased i mean when we say risk factors it means when you have it there's an increased chance that you will develop breast cancer Mm -hmm. so i'm going to run us through uh these risk factors or in simple terms if you like you think causes but they're not causes but they're in truth they are risk factors they increase your likelihood Mm -hmm. the first thing is age or i should say rather gender let me make that one the first. Female gender is one of the biggest risks. If you are female, your chances of developing breast cancer is higher than if you are male. Remember I said earlier that of all the cases, only 1% of all the cases, the 2.1 globally, are found in men. So obviously, if you're of the female gender, then naturally you have an increased risk compared to males. Number two is age. Increasing age because if you look at the statistics, again, hardly do we find breast cancer under 20. It's also rare between 20 and 30 years. Then from 30 years onwards, we begin to see a gradual increase in the numbers or the incidence of breast cancer. Mm. And then the greatest or the peak uh, is always between 40 and 49 year age group, mm. that bracket. Sometimes we see two peaks. The first peak occurs in that age bracket, 40 all the way to 50. And then the second peak happens around 70 years. Mm. So we always say that there's that bimodal distribution. Okay. But in Ghana, usually 40 to 49 years is where we get the peak uh, uh, incidence. Then there's a steady rise all the way to 70. So as you age, your risk increases for breast cancer. Okay. The next thing is a family history. And I'm going to spend a, a, a bit of time here. When we talk about a family history, a positive family history of breast cancer is the most widely recognized risk for, for, for developing the disease. A family history in this regard represents what we call first degree relatives. Mm-hmm. If your grandmother, if your mother, if your aunt, maternal aunt, if your sisters, any woman, who has any of these relatives I have mentioned suffering from breast cancer has a fourfold increase in risk of developing breast cancer. This, these are what we term first degree relatives. So again, I'll repeat grandmother, mother, maternal aunt, and sisters. These are first degree relatives. And if you have any of these relatives developing cancer, then compared to women in the general population, then you have an increased risk. Sometimes we believe it's a fourfold, you know, risk of developing breast cancer. If you have two relatives, two first degree relatives, then your risk is even higher compared to someone who has only one relative. Okay. Then it's fivefold now. Again, if you have a male relative, if you are female and you have a male relative who has breast cancer, 
then you have an increased risk. Wow. As well. Mm-hmm. Again, if you have any first degree relative who has developed ovarian cancer, cancer of the ovaries, then that is also an increased risk because we've realized that these two are closely linked in terms of how they happen. Cancer of the ovary and then cancer of the breast. Mm. So again, if you have first degree relatives who have developed ovarian cancer or cancer of the ovaries, then you have an increased risk. Like this, most of the time, that's one of the most frustrating things when I see patients in the consulting room and I'm taking a history. Mm. You ask, you get to the portion on the family history and you ask, oh, is your mother alive? Say so, no. My, my mother died a few years ago. Oh, so what happened? Or, or, or what, what killed your mom? Oh, I, I don't know. Oh, she just got sick and, and, and died. For most people, we never know the, the medical of history of our uh, within our family. Mm. But it is absolutely essential, very, very critical, especially when we talk about breast cancer or breast diseases. Mm. A lot, we've got something we call hereditary breast cancer. So we must know the, the history of some of these conditions in our families and stop this culture of not wanting to discuss ill health, even within the family. We want to, you know, cover it up. Because if you know, then you are able to take uh, 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 positive steps through screening, early detection, you know, uh, uh, methods which I'll talk about probably next week. But if you don't know, then... You, you come to hospital very late. Hmm. The other um, family history that I want to talk about is something we call the BRCA gene, uh, breast cancer gene, one and two. So in some places, they are doing genetic testing. So if within the family there's a suspicion or somebody has undergone that genetic testing and we find that particular gene, then it means people in the family are at risk. Unfortunately, that genetic testing, we don't do much of it in our part of the world. It's one of the reasons why a very famous actress, I think Angelina Jolie, you know, she had a very positive, she's now one of the ambassadors when it comes to breast cancer awareness and she yeah. does a lot of work for, for the United Nations. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, she had a, work, uh, a mastectomy bilateral, we removed both breasts because her mother died from breast cancer and then her maternal aunt also died from breast cancer. And the genetic testing revealed that she had this particular gene, the BRCA1 and then BRCA2 gene. So she decided to take uh, precautionary measures or evasive uh, 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 measures so that uh, she doesn't suffer from it. Okay. The other risk factor I want us to talk about are hormonal factors. Mm. And there's some very interesting points that will come up here. The age of first pregnancy is very important. The uh, age of first pregnancy. Is it? Yes, in terms of hormonal uh, uh, factors. Mm-hmm. Well, like those having their first child at 18 years or less are more protected than those having their first child after 25 years or later. Really? Yes. So we are not promoting, I'll explain in a bit. Well, you better do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's sometimes when we tell people, oh, drinking alcohol is protective and all of that, and when people take it away, I'm sure after this show, people are going to say, hey, Dr. Osaf is promoting teenage pregnancy. Well, no, I'm just stating the facts in terms of how hormones, you know, influence mm-hmm. uh, 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 the development of, of, of breast cancer. Mm-hmm. A woman triples her risk if she has her first child after 35 years. Women who have had no children at all also have an increased risk. Now, we believe that one of the theories we are working with is that you have some of the breast cancer types which are very sensitive to the female hormone estrogens. Mm-hmm. So, if you don't have any children at all, you have you are, your body is exposed to estrogens for a longer period. Anytime you get pregnant, there are hormonal changes. Your your estrogen level productions uh, levels are suppressed, mm-hmm. and then you produce a lot more progesterone. Rather, so anytime you get pregnant, you limit the levels of estrogen in your body. So if you go for a long period, 25, 30 years, 35 years, and that's the first time you are going to have that interruption as a result of pregnancy, then it means you would have been exposed to a lot more estrogens than somebody who has been pregnant earlier who interrupts uh, uh, her estrogen levels compared to the one who hasn't been pregnant. 
And that is why women who haven't been pregnant before are at an increased risk compared to women who have been pregnant. Again, women who have their first menstrual cycle early, and by early we mean 12 years, Mm -hmm. and also have their menopause late, and by late we mean 50 years, also have an increased risk. (laughs) <laughs> because again they are exposed to more estrogen levels compared to i mean at menopause then you don't produce a lot more estrogen so two weeks ago i talked about osteoporosis and why women are at, at, at an increased risk because at menopause they don't produce a lot more estrogen so the average age of <clears throat> menopause is 48 years so if you go to 50 52 even 54 then it means you are you have a lot more estrogen circulating in your body than one who has had menopause earlier so although menopause has its own problems and the the, the, the hot flashes and and the hair loss and 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 all of those things when it comes to breast cancer the uh, conversation then it is beneficial so we're not promoting teenage pregnancy but we're just making a statement of fact that if you delay your first pregnancy and you go as as high as 35 years then you have uh, 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 a threefold uh, increase in your risk of developing breast cancer we are talking about risk it's not automatic we're talking about risk, risk. yes risk some women also take in estrogen and that's something we call hormone replacement therapy mm-hmm. so sometimes because they have osteoporosis or other medical conditions a doctor may decide to put you on estrogen replacement mm-hmm. And that's, again, the same principle I mentioned earlier. The prolonged exposure to estrogen increases your risk. So sometimes we are very careful. The other risk factor I want to mention, which is quite interesting, is, or very instructive rather, is diet and fat intake. We've realized that the incidence of breast cancer is high in Western countries. So you look at countries like France, Germany, Switzerland, the United States, the United Kingdom, compared to, say, a country like Japan, in the 60s and 70s, before their diet became westernized, Japan, uh, the diet had very little fat or very little calories. And they had some of the lowest incidence of breast cancer until the late 70s and early 80s when their diet also started getting westernized, meaning high calorie intake. You know, so the McDonald's and all of those things that we qualify as or classify as the junk food. So we've realized that breast cancer rates correlate with the amount of uh, fat in the diet mm. and uh, we believe this is probably linked to the production of more estrogens you know from the fat that is consumed so let us be careful in terms of our high fat intake so Speak the, the, to a the, the fat helps to produce the estrogen exactly okay. and we believe that that theory of estrogen playing a significant role in increasing your risk of breast cancer mm. you know that's the connection okay. so let's cut down on the amount of fat and calories in our diet my good friend is here again. Alcohol. Oh. Alcohol also increases the risk of breast cancer. Doc, so you see, I, I didn't doc. say it loud. I hope they didn't hear me. Oh, doc. <laughs> you should have skipped that one. Well, today, uh, Philip is not here. So, <laughs> but, you know, so that's why I didn't want to mention it loudly. Wow. Well, the last risk factor is smoking. You know, some women have some genetic defects that prevents them from detoxifying certain substances we find in smoke which we call carcinogens mm. carcinogens are cancer causing agents okay all right so such women who smoke who have these defects they have a four fold increase in their risk for developing breast cancer compared to the general population so as i always say as for smoking i never compromise on it smoking tobacco or cigarettes mm. not good any day anytime you don't de- uh, derive any benefits Wow, this is this is really revealing, and I totally appreciate, I totally appreciate Doc you taking time to come share all this with us. If you have any questions for the doctor, you can send us a WhatsApp message on zero two four four three four zero four three seven, or you can actually call zero three zero two two one six five four one. And actually, remember that the conversation is not done yet Mm -mm. because we we need to also even talk about some of the symptoms the signs and symptoms of breast cancer and whatnot Mm -hmm. maybe we can start that conversation before uh, next week wednesday but if you want to call in you can call now on zero three zero two two one six five four one 
If you want to WhatsApp, you can WhatsApp on 0244340437. Good afternoon, Lexis. Uh, thanks for shedding light on this. I'm a 33-year-old female. Three years ago, I found some lumps in my breast and after a mammogram and biopsy, uh, it was found to be benign. However, recently, I've had some bloody discharge from my nipple and pain in my right breast. Should I be concerned? Right. She should be concerned. Um, if, if we are hard time, one of the things I was going to talk about, the early signs and symptoms, is a blood-stained nipple discharge. Blood-stained nipple, nipple discharge. discharge. Or a bloody nipple discharge. So, as part of the breast self-examination, we always talk about, you know, uh, gently squeezing on the nipples to see whether or not there would be a discharge. And the normal circumstances, there should be no discharge. But there are different types of discharges that can come. Sometimes you can have a milky discharge coming from the nipples. That's a different condition. But if you have a bloody nipple discharge, it is, it can be one of the signs of breast cancer. Okay. And therefore... Um, although she had something taken out three years ago, I am sure it was sent for uh, the pathologist to have a look and they declared it as benign. This is a new, it's three years down the line mm -hmm. and she's seen something else. So she should ASAP see her GP. They'll take her through the whole examination and investigation all over again. Okay. Or you can speak to Dr. Safo as well. The team Absolutely. will be able to help. Robert says, Doctor, uh, Doctor, this one, you have to read it yourself. <laughs> doctor. Right. Does man mm -hmm, doing something to his wife's breast cause cancer? Uh, my wife always prevents me from doing that, saying it could cause cancer. <laughs> Go! <laughs> <laughs> this one, I'm scoring it for the man. <laughs> oh, it's a no. It's a no. It's a big no. So the man nibbling on the nipples like apples. Hey, hey let's yeah. this. <laughs> it does not cause cancer. No, 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 no. Please no, no. confirm again that it does not cause <laughs> it does not. You should look at my DP or my WhatsApp. Oh, <laughs> so Robert, no, I, I, please, it does it. That's why it's tonight do belt. work keeping <laughs> with your wives. <laughs> look man is here. Hello, look man. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Leather. Good afternoon. I'm good afternoon to your resource person. Good afternoon, good afternoon man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. And nowadays, I see a lot of people having some drug, that local drug, or some of them are it's in a can that they a powdered one they snuff. Is there anything negative about it? Because if they don't control it now, it looks as if almost a lot of people are running into it. Sometimes it becomes more dangerous. Some of them when they take it for a long period of time. Is, is there any advice for those who have been doing it? Thank you very much. Sorry, is it, is it that they are taking they are taking some particular uh, 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 drug? Yes, it's a powdered one that they, they they take it through their noses. Oh, okay, they've been snuffing. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, probably that, that will fall. Uh, it's 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 not helpful. It's one of these uh, illicit things that's on the market at, at the moment. It gives people a high. We don't know exactly what the substance is, but uh -huh. people have been you know snuffing you know these things, and 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 it's it's not good. Uh, it's something that we need to you know get. Um, I don't know who is in, is in charge, but then it is an illicit activity, and and it's not helpful. And uh, similar to glue sniffing, people have been doing that, so that's also not not, not good. But okay, of course. well there you go. Uh, very very revealing conversation with Drive Doctor Doctor Al Safu here on Joy ninety nine point seven FM about breast cancer. Um, you, you've actually started the conversation about some of the signs, signs and, and symptoms. symptoms yes. So if you can, just, maybe if I could just run through. Yeah, run through next for us. Number one we is a up. painless swelling in the breast. That's the most common early presentation. Contrary to what most people think, and the Ghanaian, you know, health-seeking habits, mm -hmm. you know, we think it, if it's painless, then it's, harm, it's harmless. Actually, breast cancer lumps in the initial stages are painless. So most of the time, you will find a painless swelling in the lump, in, in the breast. That's the early presentation. Okay. Then I mentioned a blood-stained nipple discharge. Um, nipple retraction. Usually, the nipples are supposed to be pointing at, at somebody. You know, it's supposed to be pointing out. All right. But if you find that the nipple starts to invert, starts to go inside, it starts okay. to pull inside, it's a worrying sign. Uh, if there's a change in the size and the shape of the breast, I remember last week I mentioned that, look, bilateral structures, anything you have two of, they are never of the same 
you know, size and symmetry, mm -hmm. you know, but if you start to see significant changes in the size and then in the, in, in the shape, then you should be worried. Any rash that you see on your breast should be worrying. Sometimes people have eczema and it's around the dark area around the nipple, skin around the nipple. You know, they just think, oh, it's just, just a rash. Never take it as, as a rash. Any rash you find on your breast, you should uh, uh, have it investigated. So okay. maybe well, we'll end here and the next week I'll, next I'll continue. Week and you'll then continue and uh, give us some more of the symptoms yes and, and then, then we'll do probably, the breast self-examination yeah. i'll walk people through how to do that and then i'm sure this is where your skills would come in oh yeah it. you'd need it bro you'd need it bro <laughs> <laughs> you need to give me a whole stand in, in the hospital but, but i'll need somebody to be demonstrating on here as i talk to so maybe the jocelyn team, the production team <laughs> <laughs> EKT, she should make sure that uh, she should provide uh -huh. somebody pr production so team. We can learn how to do the, the self examination exactly. Uh, it's all Adam, so you see, you have to produce that part of the show as well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Doc. So, um, for those who want to call you and get in touch with you mm. and find out more, uh, how do they get in touch? Right. So, we're continuing the breast screening uh, at uh, Medina Branch, uh, Firestone, just behind the SGSSB. Um, if you want to call us, telephone number 0501-477-340. 0501-477-340. We'll All continue right. the conversation on our Facebook page, Medicas Hospital. Dr. Yao Osafo is CEO of Medicas Hospital. Thank you very much, Doc. You're welcome. Please consider my application for the human mammogram. I, I grant it. <laughs> Joy 99.7 FM.